Hey guys, this is James Wong from the Microsoft Resources Tech Team. Today presenting Autodesk Revit Server 2014. This is the third generation of Revit Server products from Autodesk, allowing firms to collaborate not just within their own LAN, but within multiple different geographically dispersed locations. We're going to talk about Revit Server 2014 improvement enhancements and we're also going to be talking about some best practices that you should implement for your firm. So what's new in Revit Server 2014? First and foremost it is support for Windows Server 2012 and IIS 8. The installation process and the prerequisites are actually the same as the previous versions as well as the need for Silverlight and making Revit Server admin page a trusted site. .NET for 4.5 is supported on all platforms, including Windows Server 2008 and 2008 R2. Replacing a model on Revit Server with a newer version retains the original GUID. Revit Server will detect when disk space on the server is running low and display a warning dialog. Most of you that implement Revit Server already have server monitoring tools on your network. In our model management services department, we actually noticed that there is better model file size management going from 2013 to 2014. So we noticed a Revit model we have that's about 500 megs. It actually went down to a little less than 100 megs after the upgrade. So there is also coexistence a previous version available. So if you have a Revit server environment for 2012 and 2013, you can install Revit server 2014 on top of the same server. Of course, you have to keep the cache and the projects folder in separate locations. So let's do a little review of understanding the Revit server roles. So first off, the roles do not change in 2014. The host still stores the central models. The accelerator relays model changes between workstations and the Revit server hosts between different geographically dispersed locations. The admin portion is just a website that the BIM manager will go to do tracking and model management. It's HTTP slash slash server name slash Revit server admin 2014. Again, since this is Silverlight dependent, you do have to make this a trusted site. As you've seen in the previous picture, there can be several hosts and several accelerators. But does it mean that every host can be an accelerator at the same time? Not necessarily. Hosts need better resources. There's more computational load on hosts, and thus there's more read and write on disk. The data recovery strategy. So if you have disconnected models, it must be replayed onto the host and then resynced to accelerators. You notice that if you have more hosts, then you have to replay those uh, models, which means that there will be more complications. Also, it can be confusing to Revit users. When Revit starts up, and a user wants to start a Revit session using Revit server. If you have multiple hosts, that means that all the hosts will be listed down when they go to file open to open a model from Revit server. The best practice is actually to have an accelerator at each geographically separated office and have hosts in centrally located locations. So that means also if you have a data center in North Carolina, you have a data center in Virginia, etc., etc., those are the key places where you want to place the host. And then you can segment that off and have accelerators in New York, in New Jersey, in Connecticut, in Boston, etc., etc., etc. So, how are changes sent to Revit? When a user opens a model, file open on the left hand side, scrolls down to Revit server, it, they see the host that they have access to. In essence, they will click the host and then they see the models. Those models are in essence taken from the host but are facilitated through the accelerator which caches the host's information. So when a Revit user opens a model, it would actually open it directly from the accelerator. The accelerator in turn is connected to the host via a wide area connection and it would sync information from the host deltas with its peers. So we just mentioned that the Revit user, the workstations actually have a connection to both the accelerator and the host. So what happens when the accelerator are disconnected? Well, the workstation will bypass the accelerator and passing through the WAN, send changes into its Revit server host. You'll notice that when the user does this, performance will be diminished. 
All right, so right now we're going to be doing a quick demo on the installation of Revit Server on a server called Revit Server 1. These are the same prerequisites for the 2013 version. Um, I recommend actually having a wiki page, the Autodesk Revit Server wiki page when you do the installation open. So that way you can actually go down the list and follow along. I'm doing this rather quickly. I'm actually speeding up the video. So I'm going to scroll down, double check, and install. And scroll make sure there's not too many warnings and install Silverlight which is from Microsoft click download you actually have to allow Microsoft.com as a trusted site um, in order to have your server download and run the executable as you can see here the installation takes a few minutes nothing major I'm just gonna click next install and verify that Silverlight's installed and now I'm gonna go into the setup for Revit Server 2014. I'm just going to install Tools and Utilities, click Accept, Next, uncheck everything, and check Revit Server and drop down. I'm going to enable this to be Host and Admin as well as Accelerator, just since it's a test. And you notice that the Install button is grayed out. You have to pull the button back up. And right now it's installing. Pretty simple, straightforward. Click Finish and close Windows out and what we want to do is actually open the web admin portion via Internet Explorer again it's server name slash Revit Server Admin 2014 see we already installed Silverlight but you will have to make this a trusted site so we'll do that right now All right. and to refresh and you see that this is a Revit Server Admin 2014 web page there is no rsn.ini file, so we won't have to add that in right now. But before we do, we want to uncheck hide extensions because we're going to have to have a rsn.ini file, not a txt file. So you can follow along here. The file itself will only have the host, just the host. If we press F5, you're going to see that Revit Server 1 is there and your role is installed. And that's it. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you guys found this helpful. Be sure to check out our blog and YouTube channel for other tips and tricks. Again, this is James Wong from the Microsoft Resources Tech Team signing out.